So, okay. all right, how old is the puppy? So she's five months old. She's a big girl. Where right. is she? Cindy. She's a big girl for five months. We got her from Jersey Pit Rescue. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. Come on here. Hey, Jacob, girl. Come here. Oh, she's she's just this like little mush. Oh my god, she's beautiful. She really is. She's such a cutie. Aww, she is. Wow. She's not my spice, but Yeah, I know. But she's she's there. She's doing she's doing the job. My kids are absolutely obsessed with her, and so is John. Okay. Me, I'm like, you're growing on to me. <laughs> <laughs> Aw. Alright. So what's what's going on? Give me the rundown. I mean, I'm sure okay. you're going through basic puppy crap, right? <laughs> yes, it, it really is basic puppy crap. So we've got her to do sit. We are slowly doing stay. Actually, she she does stay, but um, her attention span is you know span is very short. Um, she comes now. That's good. Um, she's like 80% potty trained. She still has accidents. Like she pees in the house, but I noticed that she pees in the house. Go ahead, Mary, you can get off. I noticed she pees in the house when, and I don't know if it's spiteful or not, but I, it's when either we leave or the, the separation anxiety, that's another thing that I'm trying to break. We have the crate next to my bed and, um, I'll put her in there 10 minutes before I leave and I'll lure her in with the, with the treat. And I say, good girl, sit down, good girl. So I give her the treat and then I'll close it. But she howls, she howls, she cries. And so I'll keep going in and I go, no, shh, no, good girl. And then I'll walk out. So I do that for like about 10 minutes to kind of separate myself from her. Um, so she, today for the first, not for the first time today, thankfully she didn't wet her bed. She didn't poop in it. Um, I came back about two hours later. So I was happy I didn't have to clean up after her. But when I came into my driveway, I can hear her. Oh, howling. I guess that's her way of calling for us because we apparently left her. <laughs> she she also probably heard you pull up too. Yeah, you think so? It's possible. The only way you'll know for sure is if you set up some kind of recording device. Yeah. Which is actually helpful because it will tell you um, – it's more, it comes in handy more so for people who like live in apartments and right. they have like a neighbor who says, Oh, your dog's barking all day long. Right. And you record it and you realize, Well, the dog is technically barking all day long, but for like a minute or two, an hour. Like, you right. know, it's like a minute or two every other hour. So they're not right. really barking all day long. Um, right. But for separation anxiety, it is helpful, number one, to see how long and how intense her vocalizations last, right? Okay. Uh, how. And if if and how intermittent they are, uh, and okay. more importantly, to make sure she's not like biting on the cage bars or things like that. That uh -huh. I, I she's not doing what she, she might have been doing that today because I did see drool on mm -hmm. the bottom of the like by the by the cage, and I'm like, whoa, is this pee? But it wasn't. She's probably um, licking then. Licking is a very common form of of separation anxiety or crate anxiety. Okay, very, so then that's yep. probably what it is because yeah. it was like it was drops, yep. it was drops. So yep. I know it was definitely drool. Um, the first time I put her in, she tried. I so I put a blanket over it just to like you know make it cozy for her. I try. I, it worked with spice, so that's why I'm trying to. <laughs> she pulled it in, didn't she? She did. She was like, "Get this crap off of me! <laughs> I don't want this." I was like, "It's supposed to help you." <laughs> All right, let's. So um, but we'll go through whatever you want to go through. But let's start with creating. Okay. Because there's a couple of things that you need to do that you need to change just from okay. talking to you for a few minutes. Uh, okay. First and foremost, and I, I actually have a full length crate training video I could send you to, but we'll talk about some highlights here. Okay, perfect. So first and foremost, you never, you, you do not want to present yourself to her if she's vocalizing. Okay. You don't want to be going back and forth if she's vocalizing. Okay. Toss okay. the treat in, which is great because you want that positive association with the crate. Okay. Do not talk to her. Do not look at her. Do not make a big deal. You could, you know, come on, girl, get, you know, get in or kennel up or whatever your command is. Toss okay. the treat in. Matter of fact, close the door and leave. And that's it. Okay. Okay. We don't want to keep presenting ourselves that could potentially validate her anxiety because she feels anxiety. She vocalizes. And what happens? You come I'm back. Sure. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's step one. Um, okay. number, number two, how many times a day does she eat? 
twice. Okay. Six o'clock in the morning and six o'clock at night. Where? In the in the kitchen, you know, in the corner of the kitchen. Okay. So we got her to sit, stay, and wait for her food. But she's still very puppy, so she I mean, at least with me, John says that he's now like teaching her to give him a kiss and then he'll go, but she still gets very excited to go right. to her food. Okay, so you want to take one of her meals, whatever okay. one is more convenient for you, and okay. feed her that meal in the crate. Oh, okay. Okay, feeding should occur in the crate while you're crate training and housebreaking. The whole of, you know, the objective behind crate training is dogs don't pee and poop where they eat and sleep. Yes, exactly. Right, okay. so we have to feed at least one. And you don't necessarily have to close the door. You could leave it open this way. She's also not associating the crate with oh, the door always being closed and right. put the bowl all the way in the back. So she has to go in and, okay. you know, just walk away or you can okay. sit down and let her, you know, let her eat. Uh, okay. Don't encourage her. Don't talk to her. Don't sweet talk her because okay. remember, there's some anxiety associated with the crate, whether it's separation anxiety or crate anxiety. We right. don't want to we don't want to interject our voices or our energy into okay. that equation. We want it to be as matter of fact as possible. Okay. Uh, and you may even need to, like, her, the first time you feed her whatever whatever meal you decide, it right. may be right outside the crate. Okay. You know, like, start, right. hey, there he is. <laughs> What's up, man? He What's just got home. <laughs> how you doing? Good. How are you? Good, Should man. Not bad at all. Or do you want to grab a chair? I'll grab a chair. Oh. All right. um, so you know, the first one, you may need to put the bowl right outside the crate. Okay. And you may need to do that for a couple of days until she feels comfortable. She does like her she does like her crate. So then that's what I'm trying to like not let her think that the crate is a bad thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um here, I'll put this higher. There we go. Um I'm trying to make her um I don't want to associate it as a bad thing. Right. So I do leave the door open all day. So she'll go in, she'll smell, but she she won't go right. in by herself. Yeah. Or I mean maybe like a little tiny bit, but right. she knows in the morning that, you know, if I have to go and she has to go into that crate, she'll go in. She won't fight me. So I do put the <laughs> she's such and we're trying to teach her off. Oh my goodness. This is Well, not right now you're teaching yeah. her jumping. <laughs> all right. Off, good girl. There you go. Okay, so yeah, so the the you know again, whatever meal you decide, uh, okay. first put the put the food all the way in the back of the crate, leave the door open, and just kind of sit down. Uh, see if that works first. If that works first, you don't need to do it piecemeal because she's already been introduced to the crate. Yeah, um, yeah, I think she'll do fine when yeah. we yeah. she goes so in. Again, that's just <laughs> so there's it's, a, it's something else that happens in the crate other than you leaving, right? Okay. Yeah. Which brings me up to my next point. We okay. have to utilize the crate when we're home, too. Okay. You did say that. Right? Because, you know, separation anxiety and crate anxiety oftentimes go hand in hand. And most people, when they're crate training or crating their dogs, they do it either when they leave the house or when they go to bed. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, if the crate is in your bedroom mm -hmm. and you guys are sleeping in there with her, that helps. But... If you're not utilizing the crate during the day and you're only using it for when you leave, that's a trigger for anxiety. Okay. So even if it's for like 10 or 15 minute segments when you are home, uh, maybe you put a, like stuff a Kong or give her like some kind of recreational chew and put her in there. Um, I think, you know, I find the best way to introduce this new thing to her and, it, you know, she's still a puppy, but, you know, she's been doing the same thing since you've had her and the crate has only been used for separation or sleep, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you're going to hop on your phone and you're going to futz around on Facebook or TikTok or something. Give her a chew treat, put her in the crate and just sit down and let her chew on the thing. You know, futz around on your phone or whatever when she's done. Matter of fact, don't make a big deal. Let her out. So now the crate isn't just about you leaving. It's just it's about, oh, I get recreational chews. I eat in here. Sometimes it just happens. Right. Um, right. That's what we do with Spice. And Spice was like that was her safe haven. Yeah. We left it open. I think we used the crate and closed it for three weeks, maybe. If, two weeks, if, if that. that. Yeah. Because, and then yeah. after that, we left the blanket over and left the side big door open. Right. And that was like, and if me and her it, had people loved... over and she didn't want to be around them, she went in the crate, laid down, and chilled. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. And then this yeah. is what I mean. We need to we need a refresher because like yep. we'll remember things. And then I'm like, did we do this? Did we not do this? Is did this work? Did this not? But you're right. That, and that is what we did. And and I'm remembering now. So. Well, you yeah, know, we'll definitely do that. You know what I find really funny is when our old, you know, when our old dogs leave us and we get a new dog, 
we forget <laughs> what they were like when they were younger and they were driving us up a wall and we we're like oh, yeah. it was so perfect and they did this but if we really think of holy shit they drove us nuts. <laughs> yeah no you're right i, I remember i remember calling you and i'm like this dog <laughs> this like i want to get rid of her now she's eating up she, but spice was bad yeah. she, she ate the whole ate, couch yeah, well, she ate we had one yeah mm -hmm. the I, I thought, and then after after we did the training with her she was like perfect in every way but yeah. we went through hell to get there right yeah, yeah. we had uh our, our old dog jake this is when diane and i first met this is like 23 years ago um but you know he was like such a, like when I tell you he was a rock solid dog, and we when we talk about him now, people would think like he was the most perfect dog. Three couches, cell phones, <laughs> answering machines back in the day. Like he ate everything, and we never even bring it up. <laughs> he was yeah. a menace. <laughs> I know. Well, I know. I, I mean, when you think about it, yeah, spicy was a menace, but yeah, oh, she is perfect. She was so perfect, and and then and I said that too because. When she came along, I was like, "If you don't meet spicy standards, I'm like, you're going, you're you're going right back." Yeah. I mean, I would never give yeah, her up. I know, but, but you know, John hit the nail on the head, right? You put the work in, and yeah, you got yeah. the results. We went through know? hell, and we got spice out of it. Yeah. And it yeah. might have taken six months, but after yeah. those six months, we had <laughs> ten and a half years with her that were perfect. Yeah, and she, I mean, she was really eager to please too, which was helpful. Yeah. And know? so is this yeah. this one. Yeah, this <laughs> one is very calm. Right. She is. Very good with the kids. Good. The only thing that I, I'm very concerned about that I never dealt with uh, we'll get there, though. is aggression with, with food with another dog. Yeah. Okay. With a, so she does not have food aggression, but we had a dog here. He took the food out, and then she became protective. She wouldn't even – she ate her food, and then she wouldn't even leave her bowl side and then growled at the other dog. And we're like, whoa, that we've never dealt with that yeah. ever. So um, I, don't, I, I don't define that as food aggression. Okay. I define that's, that I as that. Yeah. as normal dog behavior. Um, I don't feed my dogs next to each other. Um, they have their own feeding spaces. Um, and if if there's ever a you know, because I use my dogs for some of the rescue dogs that are here, mm -hmm. and if I'm bringing a dog up into the house, say for Sable to help out, you know, because Sable's a really she's like the maternal thing. She'll correct the puppy appropriately and stuff. Um, I don't need to add any variables to that outside of my control. So I pick toys up, make sure there's nothing laying around. Um, I don't allow the, the visiting dog to go into Sable's spot on the couch or anything like that. You know, I, I make sure I set it up for success. Um, mm -hmm. being that, what's the dog's name? I forget. Cinnamon. 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 So being that Cinnamon is five months old and exhibiting that is a little unusual, uh, even towards another dog. Like if she was doing it to you guys, we're having a completely different conversation. Yeah, oh, no. She she's, she's, right. The kids already put their hands in the bowl. Like She's yeah. perfect with, yeah, with the, the kids. The two are, are usually independent of each other. One does not necessarily translate to the other, right? If, if a right. dog is growling towards another dog, it's not, it's not, it, it's not always, it doesn't always translate to human aggression, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, in, in those, do you have another dog or another dog visits? No, we do have a, we have friends with dogs and we always welcome dogs into our house. Everybody right. that so, has a dog is welcome to bring them. Yeah. So, that's a good opportunity to help her increase her social confidence by having a lot of new dogs coming and going, right? Um, but feeding, especially with dogs, that, you know, that should be done, you know, that's, that's her house. That's her feeding, Right. And again, if she's exhibiting that now, as she gets older and matures, if another dog goes attempts to go after one of her resources, not not only food, um, she could be protective. Right. Of the kids, of a place on the, on the furniture of toys. Right. So um, and, and remember, five months old, she's still developing socially. So it's important we eliminate all variables that could potentially cause her to be a dog right yeah, so right. pick they dogs don't need to have toys to play with each other they could play with each other that's appropriate social interaction you add a toy or a resource to the equation a, again it's a variable that could contribute to conflict mm -hmm. um, and being that she is so young keep it simple okay. if dogs are coming over especially known friendly dogs you know you don't need to be a hero. You need to put her in positions to succeed, especially at, you know, five months old is a pretty delicate period of time for social progress. 
as far as you know puppies are concerned um but her protecting her food is her right in my opinion other mm -hmm. trainers don't believe that that's what i believe um you know i don't even when my dogs are they have the recreational chews or even toys i mean you know when you have multiple dogs we do stupid shit like buy the same exact toy so they can have their own it doesn't matter. They still want what the other one has. <laughs> you know? It's like so, kids. Yeah. So we we always have to intervene and make those decisions for them, give them their chew toys or whatever, put them in their place, and that's where they eat them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, def yeah. So be mindful of that behavior because she's so young. Uh, and I say that only because it may not only be food. So okay. if another dog comes in, it could be a, a rope toy or a Kong or a ball. It could be anything so that... I got to be honest, though, you know, Spice, for the entire 11 years, well, you know, almost 11 years old, um, she she also, did, we didn't feed... Well, we would feed her with, like, say, sugar, but they were in separate spaces. They were never fed in the same bowl or next to each other. They were always separate. And then... Um, we always took toys away also the entire time because she did. She became protective with her toys and she wouldn't share them. Yeah. But when we took the toys away, she played, you know, she played with right. other dogs. But, the, and we did, we did say that we discussed that. We said we can't feed her in front of other dogs for now. Um, and we can't, we no toys just yet. So we did, we yeah. did remember that. Good. Yeah. And I mean, and I, like, I see it. I don't go to dog parks often. But yeah. when I do with with a client or, I mean, there's times that, you know, I, I might go to take some video for content or something and I see these dogs arguing over tennis balls. And I'm like, like, that's the worst place in the world to have a resource involved. Yeah. There's already stimulated states of mind all over the place. And then you add a resource to the equation. It can only turn into a shit show. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, in your home, it's even it's even more important that we kind of be mindful of the environment and what we leave around because that is cinnamon's home right and you know two years from now she's going to be a mature confident adult and a big girl right yeah um so limit her social encounters to visiting dogs to just that positive social encounters right okay. playing with other dogs is the reward okay. we don't need to throw a tennis ball into the mix Right now, if if it turns out that that's the kind of dog she is and she shares toys, that's something you can explore along the way. But right now, her social progression should be limited to positive interactions with with friendly dogs. OK, so and then eventually she'll grow into whatever personality she that's will have one, as far as sharing or not. And that's the one thing about puppies, whether you rescue a puppy or you get a puppy from a breeder. I don't care what anybody tells you. You there is no way to, to predict Right. what their yeah. adult temperament is going to be what right. you can't what you do know is is that right now at this young age she has a lot of positive encounters with you guys the kids like all that stuff that's probably going to perpetuate because that's her life yeah. think about it. every day all the interactions you you have with her and she's doing really well those are all positive repetitions that wind up being her normal right Right. Yeah, and that, that's that's yeah. why it's good to have those positive exposures and repetitions every day, which is why when other visiting dogs come, we don't have the same amount of repetition. So we have to optimize the positive aspect of those interactions. Right. She's in a meeting with us, by the way. <laughs> there she there she is. <laughs> she's so and she, cute. And she sleeps. She really she sleeps. Yeah. I just gotta watch her because she turns around and I every now and then I'll I'll see her pick up something that she's not to pick up and like try to walk away with it like I got it, I got it. <laughs> and then it's like no you know and I see you and yeah, she turns they, around and she drops it and I'm like, oh. I mean she seems pretty chill for five months old she's she very, is. very it's very very it's relaxed. weird it's yeah, weird because yeah. spice wasn't like this it's yeah. it's it's good yeah but she weird. might have like a little American bully in her which Maybe. they're, they're yeah. a little lower energy than than Pitts or Staffies. Um, yeah. And how, how long she's been there? Uh, a, week a little a over a week, yeah. A week and a day. Okay. Another, a week well, and two days. Yeah. We picked her up on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Well, give it time. She might just be fooling you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, took, I, I said that yesterday, too. I took her out in the backyard, and, and I was playing with her, and she, she did these zoomies around the yeah, thing. And I haven't, haven't seen her, her do that, that but she yeah. was like, she was yeah. running up on a deck, going around the table, going back down, coming up. I was like, uh oh, here she is. Yeah, yeah she's like, starting to feel comfortable. Don't let her do that. Let her sleep all day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 okay. She sleeps a lot. Puppies sleep a lot. You know, they pretty much, they wake up, 
they pee, they poop, they eat, they pee, they poop, and then they run the hell around and then they sleep. <laughs> I wish so. I could do that. I know, right? Seriously. <laughs> That's funny. So anything else with the crating? So with the crating, just um, start with doing the 10, 15 minutes a day, sit there with her, just have her acclimat acclimated, and it's a positive um, yeah, the crate should always be positive. Now, that doesn't mean you can't put her ass in the crate if she's on your last nerve, right? The okay. main the main thing, we got to take a deep breath because we don't want to put her in there if we're frustrated or in, an, in, an, in a state of mind that's other than positive. So deep breath, grab a treat. Come on, Cinnamon, you mother... <laughs> <laughs> crate always has to be positive, even if okay. we're putting her in there because we need to manage her behavior or for whatever reason, every time she goes in there is positive. Okay. okay. Um, you know, the, the hard part is, you know, and I don't know if she will, but let's say, let's say she chewed like a favorite sneaker or a favorite shoe. Like, you know, you need to tend to the mess. So you got to put her away because you don't want to be cleaning up the mess with her around. So you, that's where you, you might have to, you know, take a few breaths, walk around, maybe go get a treat and, maybe this is what I call a, a bridge behavior. Um, so you have, she chewed on something or did something she wasn't supposed to, and you need to put her in the crate for whatever reason. There has, something has to happen between you seeing what happened and putting her in the crate. So I usually tell people get a treat. And because she knows sit and come, for instance, just, you know, cinnamon, come girl, come, good girl, sit, good girl. Do a couple of quick little obedience commands with her, even if it's for like 10 or 15 seconds, then put her in the crate. So you have a bridge and time and space between the shit hitting the fan and you having to put her in the crate. Okay. Because no matter how much we try to fake it, if we're, you know, let's say she had diarrhea, right? I don't care how balanced of a human being you are. Mm -hmm. It's hard to compose yourself if there's a pile of wet crap on the floor, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So deep breath, come here, girl. And it, it also calms you down too by the time you get to the crate and then you could tend to the mess or whatever. Okay. So always have that bridge, little bridge interaction between the event and going in the crate. Now, where are you at right now? You're in North Carolina? Yeah, we're Arizona? just outside Wilmington, the southeast coast. Weren't you in Arizona? No, no. It was, Arizona. It was one of our options, but it was too far. <laughs> yeah, and it's too hot, Arizona. It's too hot, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, we love Sedona. It's a really nice out there, but yeah. I don't know. I'm that would have been really culture shock. I think how much hike, how much hiking can you actually do? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't smoke pot. So <laughs> if I still smoke pot, then maybe it would have been a good, a good, uh, you know, location. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, yeah. So just, you know, when in doubt, the crate has to be a matter of fact, and just be mindful, are we potentially rewarding a level of behavior in the crate that we don't want to, like vocalizing and then presenting ourselves, like the whole back and forth thing, stop doing that. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, did we have any other? I know I had a few questions. So we did, we're doing sit, stay, calm, uh, a food protective. We talked about that. And then mm -hmm. it was the walking i mean she's pretty good with you walking john has this thing that he he needs her to be walking without a leash because spice never walked without, without a leash um i mean with a leash with him with me spice needed a leash because she pulled me till the day she passed she pulled me <laughs> she just did yeah. i never it just it's me it's my energy it's my anxiety and you i don't know if you remember but when spice got attacked by the other by the french um oh, mastiff yeah. do you remember yeah. i was in i was in the middle of that dog fight and yeah. since then it's like something just triggers yeah. you know even having her and i know she's a puppy she loves other dogs i'm like i tense up and i'm trying to take a deep breath today when i went to my mom's house my mom's my mom has a little Yorkie shit dog <laughs> who I'm sorry I know you're recording this I'm so sorry oh no and, that's um, a, I say shit and, all the time on my YouTube channel <laughs> <laughs> and I bring her there and he's he's nasty I mean he he and Spice he loved Spice though he would bite her he would just stay there and Spice would immobilize her he would she would put her head on his neck and he would stay there like that for like a good five minutes maybe less <laughs> And we we're like, oh my God, is he dead? But he wasn't. It was like perfectly done. 
but he just wants to he wants to like attack her he wants yeah. to he hates her he hates her so, so you know he respects me my mom he does not respect my stepfather he respects me so when i say no he he comes next to me he he sits and then he just walks away from her he wants nothing to do with her nothing yeah. um you can walk them together that's a good way to improve we the relationship that, yeah. But, you know, how I mean, it depends how, again, everything boils with training or behavior or anything like that. It all boils down to repetition. Yeah. So the more repetition the dogs have with each other, the more opportunity for them to improve their relationship. Anything specific I should do during their walk? So we did walk them and then that's how they got kind of, he, that's how he accepted her. He hates her, but he'll accept her in the right. house. Um, but anything specific, like give them a treat? Should I? I, I don't like them? introducing food. Again, it's okay. just, it's a variable. Our our objective is, is that the reward is them playing with each other, right? Ultimately, okay. that's the reward. Now, maybe they just don't jive, right? Maybe their energies just won't jive the way his and Spices did. But mm -hmm. uh, the objective of the walk is to just walk them as long as it takes for them to just ultimately focus on the walk. Don't okay. force the interaction, uh, yeah. you know, and if you want them to do like little butt sniffs or nose to nose, do it yeah. at the end of the walk. Okay. You know, let them burn a little bit of that energy because he, th the little guy is probably going to have some assertive energy. Mm -hmm. The puppy's going to have puppy ha happy energy. So we mm -hmm. want to take a little bit of that energy off before we, we allow them to sniff and inspect each other and things along those lines. Okay. Um, you know, and then inside the house, uh, you know, because he's little and she's young and i'm only telling you this because i know you guys <laughs> i wouldn't like if i was doing a zoom with someone i didn't know i wouldn't tell them this necessarily um you could probably just let let it go a little bit to see how it evolves that's because, what i said yeah i did that I, today. I, when he, yeah. he got aggressive with her and she she backed off so that's why i said let him let him push her to the point where she turns around now and says hey back off like i had enough right and and then, and then it's okay then we break it up then it's yeah. like all right now it's done you got a little argument out you might have one or two more but you got to the point where you knew his limit and she knew right limit. and that that's the that's what's helpful when you have a little dog that's not going to hurt a big dog and the big dog happens to be a puppy who is mouth's this big and what yeah you do? Make, take a piece of her ear off right and the thing <laughs> is this is that you know you you mentioned like if he's correcting her and she backs away for a split second, then they're communicating well. Mm -hmm. It's again, yeah, she did. She turned her back, her backside to him. Right. When, she, when the lucky snapped at her. Okay. Yeah. And, and then she turned her backside and went to walk away. And then lucky went about his thing. She went over playful again and he turned around and snapped. And then she never growled or anything, just turned around and like, kind of got in his face like i'm not going right. to back down now like now yeah. i'm gonna yeah and um she may start i don't know if she did it already but especially with puppies they they when they're trying to figure out how they fit in with another dog they'll do those in and outs right um they also i call it the hip check where they'll try and hip check the other dog to try and get some kind of spice used to do that all play, the time. playful physical con you know connection or contact with the other dog to see what their thresholds are but if she if he growls and she retreats and then comes back in and there's that little dance, let it go a little bit. See where it's going to go. Again, you could always intervene. It's not like you have two 90 pound dogs that you have to intervene with, right? It's a very young puppy who ha who you know is in the home of the older dog, right? And our hope is is that they figure it out and then that relationship will probably be the same for the rest of their lives. There'll be that little give and take. Um, yeah. But it's more so for informational purposes to kind of see where it's going to go. Because, again, a year from now, we may not be able to let it go if they're still at conflict with one another. But it sounds like it's just a little dog that's in conflict with cinnamon, not the other way yeah. around. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. she, I walked, I was, I, I'd bring her to the football games. Only for a week we had her. We had her for a week and a day. But every football practice I bring her, there's dogs there. Beautiful. She literally walks up, smells them. Awesome. One Malamute, Malam Malamua puppy? Malamute. Mm -hmm. Malamua? Okay. Malamute. Am I saying that right? Malamua, Malamua is like a German. Malamua, German Shepherd. The, the yeah. High energy ones. Yeah. Oh, Malamute yep. is the big one. Malamute is like. I mean, a Malamute is like a husky looking husky, dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It's yeah. a Malamua. Okay. And the puppy was playing, like, barking at her first. And the guy's like, oh, she never really plays like this. And all of a sudden, she just went down, her ass went up, and her paws went out, and she just wagged her tail, wanted to play, and the other dog, that's it. They were best friends. Right. Awesome. Aww. Cool. Oh. Good. 
Um, yeah, so just, uh, you know, like monitor that relationship. And obviously, the more repetitions and opportunities you have, the better. Okay. Yeah. All right. You coming back to Jersey? I, I, I'm i supposed to do a transport um, next week, but it's I'm literally bringing two dogs up and bringing two dogs down. And like, I don't even, I'm, I don't even think I'm going to, you know, I, I might surprise my mother. <laughs> That's about it. I don't have time for any social things, unfortunately, but. I haven't been up. I think I was up last year. My brother passed, and then my mother, my brother right passed in October. My father passed February, so I was up twice last year. So when everybody says you're coming up, I'm like, well, the next time one, someone dies, I'll probably be up there. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, um, all right. So, any other questions before I leave you off with a few thoughts? I don't think so. Um, I think uh, the only thing is, so she knows stay. I mean, she knows sit very, very well. Now she She's knows to stay with stay. the food. I, I get her in the morning because I feed her in the morning before I leave for work. And when I put her food down, she has to be in a sit before I even put the food in the bowl. I put the food in the bowl. She sits there. And within like, I would say 15 seconds, that's when she starts getting that like shake to like, okay, when can I go? When can yeah. I go? But yeah. For those first 15 seconds, mm -hmm. she sits there and just watches me. Good. So I started after 15 seconds, I bend over, I say kiss, and then let her go. I think I got up to like maybe 30 seconds today where she didn't get anxious. Okay. Right, bent down. And as I went to bend down, she was off her hind legs, ready to go. And I was like, no, now you're going to sit back down and then you're going to kiss me and then you're going to go. Okay. So she's doing, she's, I have to say, it, it, she's very, very, I feel easy to, to she's train. Smart. She's, she's very, very smart. easy to train. She, every, everything we worked with within maybe a couple of hours was like on point. Good. The, the only the only question I have actually now that I'm thinking about it is any suggestions for the walk? Uh, oh, the walk, right? Yeah, we got sidetracked a little bit. Um, what are you using the walker? Like a harness? A harness. So he he he. So the harness is I, the one that I bought is to stop her from pulling. She doesn't she doesn't really pull. Okay. But like I do sense like sometimes when I uh, when I was walking her, I do sense her you know pulling a little bit. So you put the um, yep. mm -hmm. the leash in the front, but there's an option to put it in the back also. He uses it in the back. I do the front just to you know help okay. me a little bit. Yeah. Um. The main you know the main thing, especially if she knows sit, I I like to do structured walks. You you probably remember we used to do that with Spice intermittently. We because we you know we needed to get her to sit and focus on us on those walks. Um, yes. I so I like to do that proactively, and so the walk is a working walk. So every once and this is where I bring some treats with you and just intermittently stop, put her in a sit. Good girl. Give her a little treat. Carry on the walk. You know, maybe, uh, you know, 60, 70 steps later, stop, sits, always stops and sits. Yes, that um, is what we, you're absolutely right. That is what we did with Spice. Remember, she used to stop. Around the corner, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, and she would sit. Every single, every single stop, she would then sit. Right. And the, the, the purpose behind that, obviously, is number one, to focus on us more. Uh, and number two, the, the objective, anytime we stop, the dog defaults into a sit. We're mm -hmm. not even saying anything now. We stop, yeah. they just automatically sit, right? Which with a puppy... Not a huge deal, but when she's older, we we want that behavior to be super reliable. Okay. Yep. Yeah, um, that is and, true. And you know, doing little walking exercises in the yard, you have a yard. Mm -hmm. Uh doing like big squares with, you know, let's let's say you go here, stop and sit. 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 Do big squares, do figure eights, do little redirections in your yard oh, where the distractions are low. Like because now we're setting up good foundations where there's no distractions. Because you go out on a walk, I mean... There's distractions. Everywhere, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, it's a week. Well, you know, three weeks from now, she might be really, like, distracted and feeling comfortable. And so we, we want that to be part of our, 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 you know, weekly training as well to do any type of training we have to do with distraction. We always start where distractions are low, and then we add distractions to, to her, you know, her acumen, if you will. Okay, that is a that's a good idea. We'll I'll start yeah. doing that with her too. Yeah. Um, and uh, resource control, which you probably remember, that's nothing in life is for free. Okay, that's where you're already doing most of it. If she doesn't do something, she doesn't get it, whatever it is. Right? Food, treats, affection, playtime, furniture. She's allowed on it. 
Um, if you do you have a back door that goes into a yard that you let her out in? Yes. You make her sit before you open that back door. She has to earn okay. all of these privileges. And what that does is it makes training an all day, every day part of life where, you know, okay. yeah, it's good to set time, time aside for little mini training sessions throughout the day. But if we're implementing resource control, training is all day, every day, every interaction. Right. Amen. So we're and what it boils down to, we're still going to spoil the hell out of her. She mm -hmm. just got to earn it. That's all. Yeah. Right. So it's always she's always in a working mindset. She's always deferring to us, looking to us for direction. That's that's the whole objective there. That's where we want her to be. OK. Yep. So. OK. Yeah. And we haven't been doing that. We open the door and she just. Well, we have a, we have the doggy door for spice. Yeah. And she learned. I put it in the screen and we <laughs> taught her to, to do it, which I should have never did because now she just goes. Yeah, so we have the door open, so she'll. So now, I mean, I can keep the door. Um, like I don't have to open it all the way. I can keep the door like slightly open, so she can't get through. So I'll start doing that, and you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a little too soon for her to have that decision making on her own. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah we 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 want, and plus, I mean, you know, it's been a long. You know, puppies even at five months old, they should always be supervised too. And I know yes. I, I'm not and saying I you're leaving her out there alone, but no. if she, if she blasts through there and you know, you would probably, I mean, they can get into trouble real fast. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. I said that to him because she, she went out and I said, John, you have to go out there with her because you know, she, I already found her eating a rock. I already found her dig, uh, not digging, but like she, there's a, a, a hole where the groundhog is. Ugh. And I already saw her by there. I said, so I'm like, no, you have to go down there with her because she's 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 a baby, just like a, a kid, a little baby. You know, you have to supervise her. Yep. She looks so cute right now. I can't <laughs> stand it. <laughs> um, um, and then the sit. If we do the sit before leaving, before opening the door, you know, sit, and then she sits, and we open the door. That's the reward. She goes outside. So when we continue to do that, that will lead into her teaching herself that if she sits in front of the door then that's her, her way of asking to go out to pee. Um, is that, is that, am I getting well, that right? The, the objective is to earn the privilege of going outside. That's, okay. that's the objective. However, she, she will start going to the back door to let you know to, if she has to go to the bathroom. And uh, just like on walks, you grab that handle and look at her. You probably won't have to say sit for very long because she'll default into a sit. Okay. Okay. Um, one thing to be mindful of, especially with puppies, is sometimes they want to go out and don't have to go out. Mm -hmm. And in which case, if like people who teach their dogs to ring the bell to go out, like that drives me nuts mm. because they're literally summoning their humans. <laughs> like, <laughs> ding, 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 come, come hither. <laughs> like, you know? like, no, yeah, you ain't telling my ass to come over there, right? <laughs> but w with a puppy with housebreaking, there's a fine line between, well, you know what, let's let her, let's err on the side of letting her out because we don't want her to have an accident in the house. But once she is house trained, just be mindful of, is she summoning you guys? Okay. <laughs> She's doing pretty good. She only yeah. pooped in the house twice. Good. Twice? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right in the basement. Once I by forgot. the door, I yeah. think she wanted to go out. Yeah. And we just didn't oh, catch But she's it. used to going out first thing in the morning. So she yeah. just, the minute he gets out of bed, she's at, uh, off the bed too. So she she has to go out because that's she goes out, poops, and pees. Right. So she that she knows already. But what I did notice and what I what the reason I ask is because we um I had what did I do? Oh no, I had left the door open and you know, it's just the doggy door, the screen with the doggy door. And um, she went out there, went, and I was like, oh, crap, she went outside. So I followed her, and she went straight down on the grass, and she peed. And then she came back up. And I'm like, good job. I'm like, good girl. So I grabbed the treat. I gave her the treat. And I'm like, oh, crap, she doesn't know how to ask to go out, So which is probably why she's having the accidents in the house. Mm -hmm. we've, had, uh, we've had quite a few her, accidents her peeing, in the house. The, peeing. Peeing. Right. Not, the pooping, the pooping no. is she's very good with. Good. Yeah, the so the, the two main things to look for is to make sure she's not peeing or pooping near where she eats or near where she yes, sleeps. Yes. Nope, she doesn't. No, it's the right? front door and yeah. the hallway. Right, because yeah. if, if we look back at crate training, right, dogs don't pee and poop where they eat and sleep, right? Right. The the progression of crate training is we get the crate under control, then we get the room that the crate is under control, and then we start adding rooms little by little. Like, for instance, you know how I told you to split her meals up, one in the crate, one in the kitchen? 
Well, at some point in the process, you're going to start moving that food bowl all around the house that she has access to. So the house becomes her crate. Oh, okay. That's, that's how we achieve housebreaking faster. So we're, okay. you know, the back door is probably, or the front door, those are probably the two spots that I wouldn't tell people to feed because if the yeah. if the puppy is having an accident at those places, they're probably trying to get out. They just can't because they don't have opposable thumbs. <laughs> so. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I did notice she did it when you went out with the boy. Uh, I think it was with the boys. She you was spiteful out. when I yeah. went out, when I went I, out and played football. I don't know if it's kids. spitefulness or not. I I did say it was spiteful too. I don't know if that's what it is or not. But he went outside with the boys, and then she went right there to the front and peed. And I was like, "You bitch!" It could be a little separation anxiety. Like, <clears throat> separate. Mm -hmm. oh, excuse me. It's okay. It's okay. You want some cranberry <laughs> juice? <laughs> <laughs> I it went down the wrong pipe. I was drinking water. I know. Um, yes, that could be a little separation anxiety because she's <clears throat> she's not out there with the family. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> okay. So then she and also she did poop in and pee in her crate once. Um, and that was we left her for that was the longest we left her in a crate. What what was that? Oh, the four of us left, yes, right? And we the four the of us time. left at the same time. It was the first time all four of us left at the same time. And when we came back, she pooped and peed in that crate, and she had poop on her. And I was we had to give her a bath. We had to oh, the whole. Um, yeah, it, it's only been a week, so I wouldn't even read much into anything that's going okay. on right now, both good and bad. Like how chill she is, like that could totally change in a couple of weeks. Um, the fact that she has an I know. Yeah. The, the fact that she had some accidents, not a huge deal because it's only been a week and um, you know how so a couple of poops and a bunch of peas, those were the accidents. Yeah. So, you know, if she's been with you eight days, you know, let's say what did she have five or six accidents. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. So she goes out four four times a day, so she has an accident like 20% 20, 20 of the time. Yeah. That's really remarkable for a, a puppy rescue. That is true. Yeah. She's doing really good. Yeah. And, really. She had, and she had accidents the first two days. That's when most of her accidents happened. Okay. So now but you're that talking. that was a new environment. I guess right. she spelling. She didn't know which way's up, which way's down. She right. Was, yeah. So now, like, you know, I would say, you know, week three or four, just take a mental snapshot and compare that to week one. And you'd be like, oh, my God, she only had like two accidents. Right, because two accidents, like if, if she had an accident yesterday and today, we're in our minds, we like we interpret that, oh, she had accidents two days in a row. But if we really look at it, she had two accidents out of like 48 potential peas or poops that she did over the course of a week. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah if, no, you're right. So, and yeah, so she, she, she's doing very, very good for her age, for sure. Okay. Yep. Um, for the food, right? After we do in the crate, how long after should, should we start doing like different parts of the house? Like when she's fully acclimated with the crate, then start in a different part of the house? Um, yeah, I, I would say, you know, keep feeding her in there only because there's the separation anxiety has a little, little bit to do with her crate anxiety. So we want to make sure we're utilizing the crate, not just for separation, but for eating or for her recreational chew sessions, like randomly when you're home. Right. Um, so I would say, uh, move the kitchen bowl around, keep the crate bowl. So keep your crate feeding at the same time, her kitchen meal, not right yet. You don't, you don't want to change too much at once, but maybe over the next, you know, over the next week or so, as she starts to eat consistently in the crate, maybe move the kitchen food, the, the kitchen feeding station around a little bit. Okay. Um, but don't move it every day, you know, maybe right. move it to the hallway for a few days or the living room for a few days. Uh, a lot of times dogs, for whatever reason, they'll have accidents in the children's rooms um, or if there's carpet somewhere. Yeah, she, did. she did, yeah. So that would, you know, an area that you need to solidify is an area of focus for feeding. Okay. But got it. you got to be consistent. You don't want to bounce around, you know, do it for several days in a row. So. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. And, you know, she was she in a foster home? She was, only, yeah. Only for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. And now, do you guys telecommute or you guys work out of, away from home? I'm home. I'm tel a telehealth. Okay, you are. So you're home all day. Yeah. Okay, all, so all e with her. even more important to utilize the crate when you're home. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. Okay.